Okay, welcome to part two of this tutorial series. In this video, we are going to be um, coding the function, the actual code for this function that we defined in the previous part. Um, this is like the main body of the tutorial, if you like. Uh, this is where it's all been leading. Um, like an adventure. Oh, that was lame. Okay, <laughs> um, right. So, just to quickly summarize what we did in the last part, we uh, created this array which is the information on the file that we want to attach to the email and we also gave uh, we sort of set this body variable which is the um, what is it it's the uh, sort of text you know that will appear in the message window so it's actually the message if you like and we're attaching this file so message attachment simple um, just quickly as well also something I did forget to mention in the previous part is that we're including this init file here. Um, I usually point it out, uh, hopefully everyone spotted it, but if not, you need to include the init file. Pro tip. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. Um, we're passing all this information into the mail file function. I don't like the name, it's awkward to say. Um, so what we need to do now, in this part, is go to the function and do something with it. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, it's something I also did in my um, tutorial on sending emails, just the mail function tutorial, uh, to find a headers array, because we need to send some headers with the email message, and we're going to be storing those in an array. So the headers we need to send are the MIME version header, which is just 1.0, the from header, which is equal to the from variable. I'll put the quotes in in a moment because I'm bad at typing. And the content type header, which will tell the email client that this message contains multiple parts, i.e. it's a multi-part message. Um, and what that means is, well, it's effectively the same exactly what it says. It means that this message contains multiple parts. And a part can either be like a te some text to display as the message, or it can be uh, a file which you can link to using the, um, you know, in the message, you can link to the file. Ooh, I just flicked a spring at myself. Um, so, what we're going to do is just set that header now. So, content. Uh, by the way, just what we're doing is just going to be setting two uh, parts. One is the text of the message, and the other is the, um, um, you know, the file, the actual. The, the file. <laughs> um, also, to separate them, it, we need to define something called the boundary. And this is just a sort of random string. It can be literally any string. Um, we're going to be using a random string just to, for the sake of it. Uh, and it, it. What it does is tells the client where a new part starts. Uh, so we just add that here to the content type header. This is the boundary whatever these are called, attribute, string, thingy. Um, and we're going to use a variable for this because we need it quite a few times. And we're going to define that variable above the headers array up here. Boundary, 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 equals md5 rand. What this will do is just generate a random 32-letter uh, string, 32-character string. Uh, and that will basically do for the boundary. It just needs to be something that's fairly unique and is not that likely to appear in the actual message. Um, obviously we know it doesn't appear in the message because the message is defined by us, um, but you know that'll do. There's no... Oh, you need one of those. There's no um, way that this will cause any problems and you know it works. I've tested it. <laughs> um, so after we've defined the headers array, um, we need to define the message array. The reason we're defining a message array and not just a sort of text message, you know, a string, is because each part of the message that I mentioned previously has its own set of headers. So basically, this is another list of headers because the only things we are going to be adding that are not headers are the body variable, wherever that is here, and the um, file information passed in. Um, so this is basically just another list of headers except that the headers here will apply to each part of the email instead of each um, instead of like the whole thing as a whole um, so basically 
Well, actually, these aren't all headers either. Um, some of them are like boundary separators. But anyway, I'll get onto that. Um, in fact, I'll get onto that right now. So, uh, basically, the, the way I worked out how to do this was by going to Wikipedia and searching for uh, multi-part message. And I came up with this page. Um, so, basically, this is what we want to define. Um, this is These are the headers that I added the from header to and put in the headers array. And then these are the parts that we're going to be adding. So we have this boundary, which is which I used a uh, MD5 of a random number uh, as like a random string. For he here, they've just used the string frontier. Uh, obviously, that will work as well. Literally, anything will work. Um, and the way this works is you have a double dash, then the boundary, and that indicates the start of a part. And then you have the headers for that part, then an empty line then the data for that part um, and then there's nothing that indicates the end uh, the double dash boundary indicates the start which sort of there but therefore indicates the end um, so after that we have double dash frontier again which is their boundary and then we have the headers for this part which happen to be sort of, sort of file headers and then we have this sort of weird data Whoops. if you notice that the uh, encoding here is set to base 64 this is a base64 encoded string. Um, you can set it to 7-bit, 8-bit or binary apparently. Oh, oh yeah, must always be. Not must not always be. Um, but we're also going to be using base64. And the reason for that is that it's like a sort of way to encode binary data as text in a way. Uh, it makes the message a bit bigger, which is a disadvantage, but it also ensures compatibility. I think. <laughs> um, that's what I read. Um, I'll put a link to this Wikipedia article in the description of this video so um, you can read it if you are that interested but to be honest I don't really care about all this boring technical email stuff uh, as long as you know the attachment arrives and it works in most well all clients then I'm happy so we're gonna be doing the same thing so to do this we need to sort of type it all out basically and it's quite long and dull so let's do that Yay, celebrate. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, start a new part, which we do by adding double dash boundary. And I'm going to copy that to the clipboard because we need it a few times and hopefully it'll speed the process up a bit. Um, we need to set the uh, content type for and the transfer encoding both for this part, even though we set the type in the original headers. So, content type and we're going to set this to text slash plain and we're going to set the um, char set character set equal to utf-8 like so and then we also need to set the content transfer encoding to 7 bit is what I used because that's what they used on Wikipedia. Um, 8 bit might be better, I don't know. I'm not really sure how that works. Feel free not to tell me. Um, but I, again, you can look all this stuff up. Um, so yeah, after we've, uh, this is like the headers for the part, and then this is the empty blank line, and then we need to add the actual data for this part. Um, and also, this data needs to be chunked which means that if there are any lines longer than however long a chunk is 64 is it something like that uh, characters it will be line breaked onto a new line um, this may not actually be necessary with a text but it definitely is necessary with files uh, I'm not really sure why um, probably more reasons something to do with email clients anyway um, or email servers or emails so what we do is PHP luckily provides a function for this chunk um, chunk split of the body easy enough uh, and then we need to um, well that is the end of that part and we need to start a new one so paste for this we need to set the content type as well so con uh, tent type I'm going to set this to the actual type of the file so this was file 
type, if you remember from the array we defined. And then we need to tell the client the name. Whoops. Oh, that shouldn't be there. The name. Ah. The name, which is also from the file array, and it's just file name. There we go. That's that header done. Except it should have that, not that. Um, and then we need to set the content disposition, whatever that is, to attachment. And that would just mean that this is an attachment. And we can also set the file name here to the file name. File name, like so. Um, so this is just basically knowing, either knowing or being able to look up the headers and being able to type. So there's nothing too complicated. Content type, why am I doing that again? Content transfer encoding equal to base 64. And then to end the headers, we have an empty line. And then we have the actual data, uh, which again needs to be chunk split. Actually, instead of the other way around, this data is going to be the result of file get contents because we need the contents of the file. And we need to get the contents of the file path. Because if you remember from the array we defined, this was the temp name from the files array. So it's where you can get the data, basically. Um, and then this will return a string, which we need to base64 encode. Luckily, PHP provides a base64 encode function. Um, what this does is takes a string and base64 encodes it. Simple enough. And then again, we just need to chunk split this string, because for some reason you need to. And then finally, to indicate the end of the email, we need the boundary again, but with a double dash at the end as well. So that is the awkward bit done. Uh, basically, it's just a, list of a load of typing. Um, surprised I was able to think of stuff to say while doing it. If that's good or not, I don't know. Um, so then, once we have the message and headers defined, we need to actually send the mail. So we're going to do that using the mail function, which takes four parameters. The first one being the where you want to send it to. The second one being the subject, like so. The next one being the message. And we want to put um, the message needs to be sort of this whole thing as a string but with a carriage return and a new line between it, like that. So the way we're going to do that is using the implode function. So we're going to implode, slash r slash n, um, uh, the message. And that's that parameter. Um, I do have a basics video on implode, the implode function, and how it works, what it, what, basically what it does. But effectively, it, it puts this first parameter between each element of the array, the second parameter, and then returns the result of all that as a string, which is why we use it like this. Um, the fourth parameter is the headers, so we're going to use implode again, slash r slash n, headers, uh, and that's basically it. Uh, I'm just going to be returning this because it returns true if it succeeds and false if it fails. Um, which means that if we return it, that will make our function return true on success and false on failure. So that's good. <laughs> so now we can go back to our browser, wherever it's gone, here, and give this a test. We don't need Wikipedia anymore. Let's go to the form, hit reload, and let's send something from... We didn't actually use this name. I'm not sure why I added it. I think I was going to put, like, file from. But we could do that. Let's go to our... Um, send email page and put um, uh, let's let's do it like this let's do from let's just do post name like so and, and that will now tell you who it's from and the details of the file so going back to our browser going back to the right browser window there we go we can send a file, just reload it, don't know why, from Bob to um, me, I guess, 
and we will pick that and hit email no errors which is a good sign going to our inbox now hit reload on the inbox a few times we have this uh, file that's been sent you can see it's called um, a file I changed the subject line so you could see that I wasn't cheating um, but I could still cheat I'm not though um, you can see it's got a little paper clip which means attachment it's quite big which also means attachment um, and the sender has been changed as well so opening this email up you can see that we have a sort of simple text body message here um, it just says from Bob and then details of the file uh, obviously if you're using this in real life on a real server you would probably want to validate the file type a bit so people don't send you the funny picture.exe um, and also the size not really very friendly in bytes but if I just click this you can see that the file has actually been attached and here it is this is the file it it works basically you can download it do whatever you like with it um, and also the message has been sent and also if I just click this little arrow it will view the headers so all these ones are basically added by the server if I just scroll right down you can see the three that I added oh and also the subject and the two so yeah from here down is what PHP adds so the, this and the subject are added by the mail function uh, this is added by PHP um, no idea why fun I added this one this one and this one uh, and you can see just here is what I'm actually trying to show you is that uh, this boundary is like a random string this is an MD5 random number and that'll be different every time you send a message so yeah this is basically done and this is where I uh, started off with receiving an email so yep that's it so thanks for watching and if there are any problems with this at all feel free to post on uh, my forum which you can find via my profile page on YouTube or my website which I won't put any links to but there is one oh I just threw something there is one on uh, my profile page so go there click forum okay uh, thanks for watching and hopefully this was vaguely useful and not too long